So now we're going to look at the piggy bank assignment. As you can see, it's gone through a couple of revisions. Hopefully this revision is easier to understand than the past. Also, we have a hints document. So what I'm going to do is talk about the assignment. We're going to look at the hints document, and then we'll dig into NetBeans and do a little bit more coding on it. I'm real proud of that little blue picture. <laughs> <laughs> All right, write a program that simulates a piggy bank. As you know, a piggy bank is a coin bank. The program will prompt the user for how many of what type of coins to add. So you need to be able to say, put some coins in, put some nickels in, and then how many. You know, I want to put in this number of pennies, this number. So the solution needs the following classes, a piggy bank class, a coin class, and a client class with a main method. This implies that whatever our main method is is not going to be inside piggy bank or coin. It's going to use the piggy bank and coin class. So piggy bank should have an array list of coin objects as a private instance variable. So piggy bank needs an add method where we can add a certain number of coins, coins of type C, and we want to support pen pennies, nickels, dimes, quarters, and dollars. Then the piggy bank class needs methods that shows how many coins are in the bank and how much money is in the bank. And it should not allow more than 50 coins in the bank. So if you call add and it's already got 50 coins in it, we want to stop. So this is what's known as UML. What UML is, is it's a description of the class where we give the class name up at the top then we give a class a method. No, excuse me, this is a data member. The data members go in the middle block. And in this case, our only data member is an array list. And if you find yourself tempted to start putting things like the total amount of money or the total amount of coins in as extra data members, don't do that. And the reason why is we want to calculate that based on the array list. Because the array list can change when you do an, a new add coins. And you don't want bad data sitting there inside your, your piggy bank. If you do an add coins and you forget to update your total that you might have up here, then it would no longer be valid. So that's kind of like caching a result. We don't want to cache our results. We always just want to use get total money and get number of coins, and those will process our array list. So here's what the functions do. Get total money returns the value of the coins and get number of coins returns this dot coins and then add coins adds a certain number of coins of type C to the bank so if the bank is full we can't add anything if the bank is not full but becomes full we want to add only up to the maximum allowed coins so here's our example if we called add coins and say the bank already has 45 out of 50 coins, but we're trying to add 10 more to it, the method should only be able to add 5 coins. And then that would fill the bank up. And so it returns a 5, indicating that 5 coins were added, not all 10. Okay, now our bank has 50 coins, so when we try to add 5 more, whoops, the bank is already full, so the method should return no coins. It should return 0. And we can add more methods to the piggy bank class or to the program as a whole as we see fit. We might add a function that lets the user know that the bank is full or empty. I mean, we could add an is empty, that kind of thing. So here's a sample run. Enter how many coins or zero to quit? Well, we want to add five coins. Enter what kind of coin? One for pennies or two for dimes? We chose one. We added pennies. Five pennies were added, and the bank now contains five coins worth $0.5. And then it keeps repeating that until we get a the bank is full message. And we know the bank is full when we try to add coins and it wasn't able to add them all. We wanted to add 10, but we were only able to add five, and so we can print a bank is full message. Now this is a little bit weird. Why does it say some coins should not could not be added here and not here? That looks a little broken. 
I think this message actually should have been for this one. And then it just flat out says the bank is full. No coins could be added. Zero pennies were added to the bank. Enter how many coins? We type in negative one. I'm going to enter negative one coins. Nice try. You can only add positive numbers of coins. How many coins? Or zero to quit. And then we quit. Okay. So does that make sense how that's going to work? Mm -hmm. Okay. So the question is how to implement this. <laughs> Let's go look at our hints document. So we will need a coin class. It doesn't need to com be complex. All it needs is to contain a certain value, the value of the coin. And then we'll create a penny coin or we'll create a nickel coin or whatever. And so this is a constructor. A constructor is a method that has the same name as the class itself. So then when we want to create a coin, we'll do something like this. Create excuse me, coin quarter is equal to new coin and we want each quarter to be equal 0 0.25. Coin dime is equal to new coin and we want to add 0 0.110 to it. So the constructor lets us pass data in while we create it. And we've seen that in our scanner. You know, scanner s is equal to new scanner and we pass something in between the parentheses. But that means the scanner class has a constructor. So this is how you create a constructor. You give it the same name as the class itself we could put the word public in front of it. If you leave the word public off, it defaults to being almost public. It def defaults to another keyword that's similar to public, but not exactly. So you can leave it off, but it'd be better to go ahead and put it. I should have put it there. And then we want to put a get value function, because once we're done with it, since this data is private, so we need a getter. We don't really need a setter. We're setting the amount of the coin when we create it here, but we do need to give value. And then hint two. Before you make the application fancy and have it prompt the user for the number of coins and types, do just a simple test like this. Create some coins, create the piggy bank, and then add some coins to the piggy bank. Bank.add 10 quarters, and then display the results call get total money and get number of coins. If your program can do all of this, then you know you can add the input and the loop and all that. So you can get a majority of credit just for implementing this kind of stuff, even if it didn't loop. So create the coin class, then create a prototype piggy bank class. Don't let the word mis prototype mislead you if you're a C programmer. It's not, a, it's just, we're going to start a piggy bank class and we're going to do some stuff with it. So the first version of the piggy bank class doesn't actually have to do anything. We could just say adding 10 quarters and then not make it do anything. We're just putting methods in there that we will then go back and fill in with some good stuff. So here's a hint as to the construction of the piggy bank. I give you the coin class for free up on the first page. I don't give you the piggy bank class, but I give you some hints. You're going to need a, a member, a private instance variable called coin list. And you're going to need some methods. You're going to need add coins. You're also going to need um, the get money and the get number of coins function. I don't show those, but here is a pretty good stab at making an add coins function. So this does not meet all the requirements. It doesn't put a limit on the number of coins being added. But it's a good start. So let's do some of this. I'm going to create a new project called Piggy Bank. And I always type something there and I'm not supposed to. Instead, I just choose Java, Java application and type something on the next page. Piggy bank. Flat assignment. Something like that. Or your initials or whatever. So as usual, that creates a class with a main method. Now, we don't want this to say piggy bank here because that's actually, well, I guess we called our class bank or something. I'm not sure what we call our class. We can, we can work our way around it, but the class itself 
should not be called. Our main method does not go in the piggy bank class. We can go back and look at our uh, Here we go. So piggy bank class is the class that we, our main method is going to use, so we don't want our main method in a file called piggy bank. Okay. That means we're going to have to add two classes. We're going to add a coin class, and we're going to add a piggy bank class. So I'm going to come over to the source package and do new Java class. This one's going to be called coin. And then another one new Java class, call this one piggy bank, and the one with our main method, I'm really dissatisfied with that name, so I'm going to right click and choose refactor rename and just call it main or client. Call it client. All right, that's better. Now I'm happier. I have a client class that's going to use the coin class in the piggy bank class. So the helpful hints document actually has a coin class. But let's see if we can remake it by memory. We're going to need a private variable that contains the value of the coin. And we're going to need a constructor we can use to create. Without the constructor, we'd have to do some kind of set value, set or audit, so that we can change, you know, the value of the coin. So public constructors don't have return types because a constructor is a method that has no return type, the same name as the class, and is called by the new keyword. But we do want to pass in the amount, the value that's being passed in. And so we will set the value of our this variable, of our value of variable, equal to the parameter that's passed in. So this variable is equal to that one. That's what it's referencing. And this one is equal to the parameter being passed in. That's why we're using this keyword. If we change the name of this, to v or something, we wouldn't have to call it this value. We could just say value is equal to v. But I think it's clearer to leave it as it was. And we need to be able to get this thing back out. So public double get value. We don't need a set a getter, I mean a setter. We don't need a mutator. Because we're not going to let the program change the value of it once created. But we do want to return the value of it. So that's our coin class. Here it's giving us a little warning for some reason. Field value can be final. Won't hurt it to do that. Make value final. All that did is add the word final there, but we don't need that. It just makes that error go away. All this is telling us is that once the coin is created, the value is never going to change, and that's true because we didn't put a set value method in it. But that's getting overly pretty. I'm going to take that out and leave the error message, the warning, excuse me. So now I'm going to go back to my client, and I'm going to test this class just by creating a few coins. Coin quarter is equal to new coin of a value of 0 0.25. Coin penny is equal to a new coin with a value of 0 0.01. And just to make sure this is working, let's put some print statements in. System.out.println quarter value is plus, excuse me, plus quarter.get value. And since that went off the end of the screen, I'm going to do that. And we'll do the same for the penny. We're going to do incremental development, which means. We're going to add a few things, we're going to test them, and we're going to add a few more. So the penny value is plus 
order dot excuse me penny dot get value is worth 0 0.25 and a penny is worth 0 0.1. Did you know that the metal inside a penny is worth more than a penny? <laughs> Some people want to stop printing them because, <laughs> because it costs more for the government meant to print them than they're worth. Okay. So now let's make our piggy bank class. And the piggy bank's going to need one key instance member variable, which is the array list of coins, so that we can add things to it. So we tested it. Our coin class is working pretty good. That's the easy part of the assignment. Now we got the piggy bank. So the piggy bank, it needs an array list of coins. So we're going to make that private just to make, you know, keep bad programmers from monkeying directly with our coin list. They shouldn't be moving the coins around inside our bank without our knowledge. So private array list. We need an array list of coin. And I don't remember what my hint suggested we call that. I, oh, coin list. Okay. We can deal with that. That'll be the name of it. And we may as well create it on the fly right now is equal to new array list. There. And of course it's yelling at me that I don't have array list defined, so I'm going to come over here. And as always I tell people it's okay to choose add import, but if you do create class it's going to break. So if you don't see the option add import, if you only see create class, that means we spelled it wrong or something. Then just kind of like we did our sum when we had an array list of rainfalls or something like that, we want to add up all the values of our coins. So I don't remember what that function was supposed to be called. Get total money. Let's, let's add a get total money to our class. We haven't even added any coins to it yet, but we can implement a get total money. We know how to run through an array list adding up all the values. So when you're looking at a UML like this, the minus means that it's private, and then the pluses mean that those methods are public. So get total money doesn't accept any parameters. And all it needs to do is run through the array list, summing up all the values. So just like we've done before, double sum is equal to zero. And there's probably a method. No, I don't think there is. Now we're going to use our handy dandy for each loop. For coin C in the coin list, sum is equal to sum or sum plus equals c dot get value and then we will return that sum oh I forgot to declare the type I have public and get total money but I forgot to declare the type I better go back up and add that And then we need another one that counts the number of coins. Well, the number of coins is just the length of the array list. 
So that one's super easy. What did the hints document suggest? Okay, get number of coins. And that one could be an int. Public int, get number of coins. And all this needs to do is return the length of the array list. So return coin list dot size. Because of course they had to call it dot size here and call it dot length on other things. There we go. Now this class still doesn't do a lick of good because we don't have an add coins function. But we're getting there. So let's go back to our client code. And even though we don't have an add coin function, we can at least create that piggy bank. Make sure that that code doesn't have any fundamental errors. Piggy bank bank is equal to new piggy bank. Wait, why did I add braces? And then let's test those two functions. Double value is equal to bank dot get total money. Double num coins is equal to bank dot get number of coins. Now those should both be zero, so when we print them out, system dot out dot print f always got to change things up and go to print F. Here we go. Let's print coins equals percent D because that's an integer and value is equal to percent dot two F slash in and we will print the number of coins and the value and we want to see those both be zero. He's yelling at me. What have I done wrong? Invalid value type double for format specifier. What? Oh, I made num coins a double and I said I was going to make it an end. Okay. That makes that error go away. Let's print it out and see if we get zeros like we want to see. All right, coins is equal to zero, value is equal to zero. That's cool. That means at least our functions are working. There's no way to add coins to it. But we're most of the way there, because now we can add a function to it to add the coins. So what we want to be able to do is now that we have coins like this, we want to be able to add them to the bank, like before we printed them out. So somewhere down here, I want to be able to do something like bank.addCoins, and I want to pass the coin in, and I want to pass the number of coins in. So like quarter, comma, ten. And it's possible that in my specs, I ask for those numbers to be reversed. Let's go eyeball that. Add coins. Okay, how many was supposed to come first? And then coin was supposed to come second. So I want to add ten quarters to it. type and then I want to add now this is useless because that function is not there yet that method is not there yet I'm going to add five pennies to it but once we write our add coins method that will work so we're going to switch over So our add coin method does not exist, so these are being flagged as errors, but we'll fix that. And we have source code in our help file for what that looks like. 
I think. No, that's the assignment. Here's the hints. So add coins. What's it going to do? It needs to return the number of coins added. So we're going to need a counter. And it needs to accept a parameter, how many coins we want to add and a co what type of coin. And we need a loop. So we will count up to how many coins we're supposed to add. And each time we're going to call coin lot coin list dot add. Now this add method is actually part of the array list class. We're calling add just like we did every other time we wanted to put data on an array list. So we're going to write that. Mine may wind up looking a little bit different just because I'm going to be writing it by hand and memory. It needs to return the number of coins. Did I make it add coins or add coin? Add coins, okay. It's supposed to accept the number, how many, and then it's supposed to accept the coin type. I think I'll just call it C. And what does this method do? It adds coins up to the maximum, or just, yeah, up to how many? We never did. That's going to kind of be a problem. We're going to have to go back up and add a maximum counter up here. But we'll do that in a minute. So return how many coins added. So we start off with added equal to zero. We haven't added any coins yet. Then we need a while loop or a for loop. Let's run through. No. Okay, I'm going to go take a look at my cheat sheet again. While. Okay, while looks like a good thing. We could use a for loop, but we would still have to keep track of how many coins we added anyways. So let's do while added is less than how many. How many is that parameter? added plus equals one and then coin list dot add the value of that coin c dot get value and then we can return the number added and I'm getting an error here no suitable method found for add double. Oh, I'm not supposed to be calling get value. I'm just adding the coin itself because it's not a coin list of doubles. It's a coin, it's a coin list of coins. So the trick is going to be somewhere in this loop, we have to make sure that the bank isn't already full. And in order to do that, we're going to need a constant defined somewhere. So I will scroll back up and under the array list, final int max coins equals 50. But I'm not going to actually implement that code. That's left for the student. <laughs> Alrighty. But I am going to put a note here. Note. Somehow this loop should take into account the max coins so we don't add more than 50 coins. So going back to the client code, those methods, if I resave the document, should now exist. So I've added 10 quarters, I've added 5 pennies, and then I get the total money out, I get the number of coins out, and I print those values. And let's see if that works. So it should display 15 coins in the bank, and since it's got 10 quarters, that's $2.50, and 5 pennies is two fifty-five. So I hope to see 15 and 255. 
So it runs, we have 15 coins in it, and 255. So this is enough to solve the rest of it. What I mean by that is eventually you're going to want to make it have a loop so that it runs until the user chooses to quit. And if they type in negative one, you break the loop, something like that. And eventually you're going to want to make sure that add coin will not add more than 50 coins to the bank. But if you do it even without that maximum counter, then you'll get majority credit for it. You won't get 100 on it, but you'll get majority credit as long as it loops and it asks for the coins. We'll need to add a couple more coins up here besides quarters and pennies. We'll want the other ones, dimes and nickels and so far. But that's enough. So let's see if we can show the code for each one of these one more time. Here's the client code. It's under main. Let's go to look at the coin class. The coin class is real easy. The piggy bank class, unfortunately, is more than will fit on one screen. But here's the top of the screen where we create the array list and where we set a constant equal to the max number of coins. Here's get number of coins where we return the length of the array list. Here's get total money where we use a loop to sum up all the values in the array list. And then here's add coins. So that should get you well on your way. And I don't want you to stop there. I want you to go ahead and implement the rest of the code, or you know, at least a loop that will ask for what coin to add and how many of that coin to add. And if they choose negative one, then break the loop. And each time you add coins, you ought to display information about the bank, kind of like we did here.